All right, so let's try this again. In the week six folder, force diagram notes. Go to my document. This is what your notes should look like. All right, so same drill as before. You're gonna double click on the highlighted boxes to add in the notes that pop up in the Nearpod. All right, so the first thing I just asked you to tell me about your weekend. Sounds like you guys had a pretty good weekend. Um, let's see, Christian looks like he had a pretty awesome weekend uh, going to Sky Zone. Uh, pretty awesome. All right, pretty basic weekend. Good work, guys. All right, glad you guys had some, had fun. All right, I had a pretty boring weekend too. Just did a lot of work around the house. All right, so good, good to hear. I like to hear about your weekends. Since we can meet in person, it's nice to kind of get to know you through uh, the computer. All right, so force vectors. Uh, vectors is just a funny word to uh, describe an arrow. So the arrow points in the direction and the magnitude of the force being applied. So arrow points in the direction, that's the first blank. The thickness and the length of the arrow represent the size and or the magnitude of the force. So the bigger, the thicker the arrow, the more force is being applied to that object. It's an easy way for you to see that um, when we do these force diagrams. So it's the direction, length, thickness, Thickness, size are the things you should be writing down. So right here, uh, the arrow points in the direction. Okay. The length or thickness. Zero represents the size of the force. So this is how it should be when you're done with the first part. All right, so then the um, truck here in this picture, you can see is moving in this direction, all right? And it's a large arrow, so there's a lot of force behind it. So again, this is how our notes are gonna go today. So you can see and highlight the important parts of uh, the lesson. All right. So next up, um, the main point we're going to talk about today is combination of forces. This combination of forces is also called the net force. The net force is the total amount of force on an object. So it's kind of like the total, you could also easily say total force on an object, but net force is like a scientific term for it. So on here, make sure you're typing in net. All right, so we're gonna look at a bunch of different figures with the net force. So the net force, you could easily call the total force. Think of it that way. The sum of all the forces. So you're adding up all the forces together. All right, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because on the, this slide, because there's only one thing to write down. All right, the net force is important because it tells us what direction the object is going to move in. So the first part of the net force is, is when the net force is equal to zero. When the net force is equal to zero, it's also called balance. A balanced force is when the net force is equal to zero. 
All right. And there's no motion in a balanced force, remember? So if there's no motion, the, for the force is balanced. So like in this picture, this guy's getting swatted. All right. When they both apply uh, force to the ball, one's trying to go to the basket. The other's trying to keep it out of the basket. Since they're equal, that ball will stay still in the air. And the ball is not going to move. That's a good example of a balanced force. All right, so that goes right here. I'm not going to fill in all the notes. I want you guys to fill in them as you go. All right. All right, so this would be zero. And this blank would be no change in motion. The object is not moving. And then you can list the three examples that I have in there, or better yet, come up with your own. So the paper on a desk, a paper could also be a computer, a phone, anything. You sitting in the chair, a clock hanging on the wall. So for example, like the clock hanging on the wall, gravity is that force that's always pulling you down. Gravity is the is a force in every one of these examples, actually. It's the paper on the desk, gravity is trying to pull it down. The clock uh, on the wall, gravity is trying to drop it. Uh, you sitting in a chair, gravity is actually pulling you towards the ground right now. But the chair that you're sitting in is uh, balancing that force by pushing up. So you are being pushed down by gravity, and the chair is pushing up with the an equal force, which is causing you to stay still. Thankfully, if you sat in a different type of chair, that like a beanbag chair, um, you would fall through the chair. The opposite is an unbalanced force. And again, we've talked about this already. So um, this shouldn't be anything that's new to you, but it should, it should just be kind of a, a recap. So for an unbalanced force, there is a net force acting on the object. So there is an amount or total force being uh, moved around. This causes motion. So when there is a net force, there is motion. It's possible to add forces together that are moving in the same direction or subtract forces that are moving in opposite directions. So like in this picture here, you have the guy that's uh, blocking the shot, applying more force to the ball than the guy that's shooting. So the ball is going to move in the direction of the guy that's blocking the shot. The only thing you need to record here is net. So there is an, a net force acting on an object. This causes a change in motion is next. Oh, the change in motion. We're going to get to this second, the third bullet point here in a minute. So there is a net force acting on an object that causes a change in motion. So with these forces, unbalanced forces, if the forces are moving in the same direction, you add the forces. If the forces are moving in the same direction, you add the forces together. So in this picture, you can picture uh, this is somebody moving a piano. When you move a piano, uh, you're going to need more than one person. So that's why you get help, so that they can add the force to you as you move it. So if you add the girl that pushes is pushing to the right and the boy is pulling to the right, their forces together is 45 newtons of force, which is enough to move the piano. But, but by themselves, that's not enough force. So you add their forces together, which creates a larger force, which allows the piano to be moved. That's a pretty uh, 
pretty understandable concept here. If anyone's ever helped you move anything or if you've ever uh, ever helped somebody move out of an apartment or a house and you picked up a couch or a refrigerator or anything heavy, um, you guys have used this to help you move the object. Oop, next slide. If the forces are unbalanced in opposite directions, you'll subtract the forces. So opposites subtract. Opposites subtract are the two things you write down in your notes. So if dog one on the left here is pulling with 10 newtons to the left, and the dog on the right is a little bigger, and he's pulling with 12 newtons to the right. Since those forces are in opposite directions, you're going to subtract the forces. So the total net force is two. And you can determine which direction it's going to go by looking at the bigger force. So obviously in this picture, the bigger dog is pulling with more force. So that dog is going to pull in that direction and the overall net force will go in that same direction because it's a larger object. It has more force. So it, it gets to dictate what direction it goes in. So the main takeaway from these two points is if it's opposite, subtract. If the forces are moving in the same direction, add them. If the op force is in the opposite direction, you subtract, and the greater force will be the motion that it moves in, or the direction that it moves in. So again, with this dog, the 12 Newton dog has more force than the 10 Newton dog. So then it's going to move in the direction of the bigger dog with the difference in forces, two Newtons of force. So what we've been working on, what you've been seeing in these uh, pictures that I put up for the balance and the unbalanced forces, those are called force diagrams. The force diagrams have the uh, force of every object in there, and it has the direction in which they're, they're, the force is being applied. So when we draw these, um, we're going to practice a few here, but they all follow the same rules. So these are what you write down on your notes. So these will go right there. So the sum of forces labeled in Newtons and the direction the object will move as a result. So type those in. All right, when you have these typed in, go ahead and hit done, or tell me done in the chat. All right, since there are no objections, I'm going to move on. Two. And practice. All right, so uh, remember for these on Nearpod, you're allowed to draw on the screen. So go down here and select a color. All right. And here's how you navigate it. You can use your mouse to click and drag and draw, or you can use your finger to draw as well, whichever one you like more. If you make a mistake, you can click this back arrow here, which will get rid of the previous thing you just did. Or you can use the eraser, which is right here and erase uh, what you've done as well, whatever is easier for you. So what we're going to be doing in these is we're just going to be doing um, the net force and the direction the object would move in. So, for example, in this first one, you have 15 newtons going to the right and 25 newtons pushing to the left. So, first question you ask yourself, are these balanced? Or unbalanced. When you come to that conclusion, 
you determine whether you're going to add or subtract them. So in this one, 25 is not equal to 15, obviously. So you're going to have subtraction. <clears throat> so you're going to subtract 25 from 15. And that will give you 10. So your answer is going to be 10 newtons. All right, now you have to figure out the direction. So the direction will be in the greater force in that direction. So you can see 25 is pushing to the left. That one was larger than 15. So the overall direct the motion of this object would be this way. So that's an ugly arrow, so I'm going to go back and fix that. Man, I cannot draw straight arrow to save my life today. There we go. So it's going to be 10 newtons to the left, and that's all you do. Okay? So I'll give you, uh, I'll help you out with one more. Over here, you have uh, four newtons. All right, sorry. Uh, Two newtons pushing to the left for number four, and 14 newtons pushing to the left as well. So you ask yourself, are these um, going in the same direction or opposite direction? And are they balanced forces? All right? So these are unbalanced forces, obviously, all right, because they're not the same, and they're not moving in opposite directions. So you're going to add these forces together because they are moving in the same direction. They're both moving to the left. So 2 plus 14 is 16. And it's going to be moving in the same direction to this way. Okay, so what I'm going to want you to do is I want you to go through and I want you guys to try... Two, five, six, and three. So I want you guys to try these ones and do them just like I did. All right? You're going to want the uh, net force and the direction that it's going. If there's no direction, you don't have to draw an arrow. But I want the net force and I want the direction that they would go overall. All right? So I'm going to give you guys five minutes to do this, all right? That's a, more than enough time. So I actually might even do less, all right? But well, you need to be doing this on your computer and hit submit. Because then after that, I'm going to go over the exit ticket. So go ahead and do that now. All right, guys, we got to talk because this is not okay. I understand that this is hard to do online, and it's, it's not as easy as doing it in person. But I, I need you guys to participate. I can't just be talking to an empty room. So you will do exponentially a lot better if you work with me and you participate. I'm telling you, class will go smoother, you will learn more, and you will definitely get a better grade. Right now I only have two people that have submitted. All right. So these are all correct. So uh, we got these two up here that we did together. This one down here, number two is 20 newtons to the right. Uh, number five is zero newtons, all right? So it's not going to move. And same with number six. Those are balanced forces in opposite directions. And then down here, you're at opposite directions and more four more newtons moving to the right, all right? So uh, this is Gabrielle's. She did a great job. Good work.
Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to change over to the um, exit ticket. So let me show you the answers real quick. So again, those should have been the answers. All right, so now I need you to switch over to um, your Word document. So your Google document is where you should be. All right, and it should be right here. So I'm going to show you how to answer these. These are the exit tickets. It's letting me know if you understood this or not. So the, the instructions are right here too. So you're going to click on the picture and click edit. Then select the option and the scribble option and hit save and close. All right, so I'm going to click on this. I'm going to go to edit right here. All right, it's going to pull up the drawing. I'm going to click this drop down arrow where it says select line. And I'm going to go to scribble. All right, so one more time. You click on the picture. You click on edit, which will pop up at the bottom. You'll go to this uh, line here where it says line. And then you'll click select line and go to scribble right here at the bottom. You should get a little crosshair pop up. So what you can do now is you read the problem. So a force is acting on each of the objects below. In the first one, it's moving three meters to the right. The second one, it's pushing down to three meters. I'm sorry, Newtons, not meters, my bad, Newtons. And then on this one on the right, the force is pushing the box to the left with three Newtons of force. So what can you say can be concluded about all these forces? So what can what can we what conclusion can we come to? All right. So A, they're the same because they point towards the object. So the for, so that one's saying the forces are the same because the, all the forces point at the objects. B, they are the same because they have the same magnitude, which means like uh, the amount. They are the same because they all have the same size of force. And then C, you have different, they are different because they have different magnitudes. And D, they are different because they, they have different directions. So which one of those is true? All right. Which one of those is true? So are the forces the same or are they different acting on those objects? And then if it's different, which one? If it's the same, A or B? So what you're going to do is then with this crosshair, you're going to circle it, all right? So you're going to circle your answer like this. So click and draw, and it'll let you circle your answer. You could then change the color of the line here to make it a little bit easier to see, and then click Save and Close, and it'll come up. All right, so one more time. You click on line, scribble, and then you're going to select the one you want to choose by clicking and circling it. Like that. You can change the color if you want to make it a little bit easier to see. And then Click save and close. And then you can see when you submit it, I can see which one you picked. Again, all I'm looking for is a circle. Don't worry about if it's perfect or not. If you want to change your answer, go back and click edit again. And then click on the scribble you had and then just hit click on delete or backspace to remove the wrong answer you want or the answer you want to change. And then click save and close again. Same thing for this one. You can click on edit. All right. Then you go to line. Scribble. And then you're going to circle whichever one you want. So this one, it says four forces are acting in a box. Uh, the box will increase in speed or move. Basically, it's saying or move 
in what direction? Okay. Then when you're done, hit submit. And that is all we got for today. So if you have any questions, make sure you come to my office hours and I can help guide you through this. Um, if you need to re-see anything, how I did the exit ticket part, come back and watch the video on uh, our YouTube channel.